Well, what we are doing now is assembling more of these rafters. And John Tesno there is using a high-speed, very good drill to drill through this galvanized steel. And we are assembling them. They are in five parts, and each part has to go in appropriately. And you put them together with the bolts and make the hoop. And this happens to be like 30 foot wide and will be almost 15 foot high. And there's Jill and Kayla over there. And then once these rafters are assembled, then we are moving slowly over here and we will be putting them in place down into the ground posts. But that'll be for a little while later. As you see, he's got the ground posts in here. They're all leveled and very plumb. And see the bolts, holes there. And the rafters are laid out. And then this afternoon, after we put some scaffolding up to make them more secure when we're doing the work, we'll be putting them together. So that's the assembly line so far. We have, I think, 18 of these to put together. And sometime in about an hour or so, we'll, we'll have them all assembled. And then we will be putting them up. And we did learn a little trick here. When we drill these holes, pre-drill these holes for the hex nuts that go in, we found that if you use a piece of duct tape and just put over the edge of the pipe, then your drill bit will not walk and you're much more secure. So you can drill it much more easily. It doesn't slide up and down the, the rafter. So you see him drilling right there and it put a piece of duct tape and it holds it right exactly in place. So that's the procedure now. Rick is laying out the end pieces and they're all numbered so you can appropriately put one number into the other number. And of course it's kind of easy because it goes male to female and female to male and so forth all the way around the top and through the end. So we'll stop for now. We'll take some more videos in a few minutes. Okay, so this is putting together the purlins and they've been pieced together and then they have um, screws in them also to keep them from coming apart once it's all up and then these are the rafter support kit and um, we ordered the extra support kit because we get a lot of wind out here we don't get a whole lot of snow load for the most part but we do get a lot of wind and so these rafter support kits just go every I can't remember every fourth support maybe something like that and then they just add some extra strength to the the entire greenhouse structure so that hopefully the wind won't rip it apart um, I guess we'll see and then they also use them quite often in high snow load areas in um, to hold up snow that may land on the greenhouse so things are coming along pretty good as you can see we have all of the rafters um, the top part the rounded part laid out up there and then we have the scaffolding set up and we're getting ready to put the first end rafter up and then at some point we will also attach um, coverings to those end rafters uh, they the kit supplies a, kind of a fiber plastic stuff with a zipper in it for the ends and I think we might use that on one and then on this other end that gets the most of this, the wind we're going to put um, a heavier, uh, I don't know, maybe polycarbonate or phylon or something like that, that that would be a little bit stronger to hold up this windy end and um, we'll see how that goes. We're kind of still putting our plan together for that. All right, we have four rafters up. Only 15 to go, but kind of getting into a system now. They, um, we put the big rafters up, put one up, and then they have to put the purlins across to strengthen it and hold it into place. So as we go, it gets a little faster each time because everybody kind of knows what their part is. Okay, today is Sunday, September 9th, 2012. And we are putting up the polycarbonate panels on the north end of the high tunnel greenhouse. So, so far what we've done is essentially put together all of the kits of the framework of the greenhouse, all the rafters and the um, baseboards and everything, and then we added in 
a more permanent um, set of end walls because of the high winds that we get out here pretty much year round, but especially in the winter time. Um, so you can see the framework. This is the north end, and there will be a walkthrough door just to the left of the ladder. And then there's a garage door that we've already put on right behind where the ladder is. It's just a simple roll down garage door like you see on storage sheds and that sort of thing. And hopefully that will hold up to the, the winter weather that we get. Um, we decided to use corrugated polycarbonate panels on this end of the greenhouse um, for this first year to strengthen it up. Um, we talked about a lot of different things, just using like plywood or um, tin or the pylon like you put on the you know roofs of uh, patios and decks, that sort of thing, that also allows some sun to come through, but it's made out of fiberglass instead of the polycarbonate. And then we also talked about polycarbonate that was other colors, not the clear, but and I'm kind of a sucker for having as much light come through and being able to see as I can. And this is the end that will look out onto Bear Butte, so that's kind of nice. When I'm working in the greenhouse, I'll be able to see Kind of the weather going by on the on the butte side so we're doing sheets that are two feet wide and then we um, cut them custom cut them to the length that's needed and so we got um, some various lengths of polycarbonate panels we're working with eight foot lengths right now that we're cutting down to size and then it also comes in 10 foot lengths and 12 foot lengths. So on that other end over there where we don't have a walkthrough door, we'll be able to use um, full, tw a full 12 foot length or two over there. <laughs> so um, yeah, so it's a nice day in September, great temperatures, just in, I don't know, maybe 80, low 80s today, very little breeze as you can tell from the tarp up there. And it's just kind of providing some shade for us and the dogs while we're working. And it's a beautiful day at the gardens today. It's Saturday, September 15th, and we actually got the plastic covering on the high tunnel greenhouse today. So we're pretty stoked about that because that's been a long ways in the, in the making. We started working on this high tunnel in, um, I don't know, May probably with the digging of the holes and the pouring of the concrete and the footings for everything. And so um, it's been a long, long process. But today was a really excellent day for putting the plastic on because you really can't have hardly any breeze whatsoever. And amazingly, it was a day that was just like this, like it is right now, all day long with just a very, very, very light breeze. And um, that actually helped a little bit in getting the plastic over. And then we just had about six people that were working on holding the plastic down and then getting it put into place. And, and it, it worked. We could, probably could have used a couple more, but that was what we had, and so it worked. So um, this is a 30 by 72 high tunnel. And we still have um, the roll-up portion to finish. So basically, you just assemble all of these um, conduit pipes sort of things that are laying along here. And then you have a crank system that will crank up the sides on both sides when you want the ventilation to go through. And that is, um, that's what makes a high tunnel a high tunnel is that instead of just having doors that open on the ends and ventilation that way and then say fans or something, you have these walls that actually roll up where the plastic rolls up on both sides or one side depending on how much you need for any particular day and that gives ventilation for the plants that are growing inside so that they don't get too humid or um, too warm that sort of thing so okay so this is the end wall that comes in the kit with the high tunnel that we ordered and this is a farm tech high tunnel. I guess we can't really give any sort of critique on it yet because we haven't grown anything in it, but they come pretty highly recommended. But um, this type of end wall, which is just basically a vinyl or a big, big piece of a tarp almost with zippers in it, and then these tie straps, uh, is not, it, we know it's not gonna hold up out here in the weather that we get in Meade County, South Dakota. 
And so for this year, for this winter, we did put this end up on the south end, but then you can see we did um, furring strips along there to really um, butt it up strong against the framing that we put underneath. Normally on a high tunnel, you would not have all the framing that you can kind of see underneath there and the furring strips. It would just be that end. Um, but because we do get some pretty ferocious winds out here and some storms and blizzards from time to time, we decided that we would do that and try to keep it as strong as we can. And for the, the stuff that I'm going to try to grow this fall, we really shouldn't need to be able to open up that end because we can roll up the sides if we need to. So that's the, the accommodations we've made for the weather that we have here. Okay, so this is kind of a close-up section on how we attach the U-channel, which is this part right here. It's just an aluminum channel to the ribbon board, um, which was when you have the roll-up side, essentially the roll-up side will come up to this point here. And then in order to hold the, the plastic down, you use what's called wiggle wire. And you just kind of bend it into place. It's not hard at all to put in there. You need a couple people to hold the plastic down taut so that you kind of have this drum-like effect on the top. And then you just get that wiggle wire all the way along the channel that's on the ribbon board here. And this is... This is what holds the entire plastic essentially onto the greenhouse structure is just this channel and this wiggle wire. So it goes along both sides, the whole 72 foot lengths on both sides, and then it goes up over the tops of the ends also, the channel and the wiggle wire. You can't see it from here, but that's what holds the plastic up on the end pieces also.